Welcome everyone to the second WriteSoft What's Up webinar of 2019. Today's topic is Android migration. Why now? Thank you for joining us today. My name is Sue Pogachnik, and I'm the marketing manager here at WriteSoft, and we'll be helping moderate today's session. Our guest presenter today is Doug Mall, the Operations and Technical Services Manager at MCAT. Doug will talk about the evolution of handheld hardware devices and why manufacturers are migrating to Android now. Dan Plantenberg, one of our WriteSoft implementation and support specialists, will briefly discuss how WriteScan works seamlessly with Android devices and optimizes label printing at the same time. Then, Will Barnett, Senior Account Manager at MCAT, will discuss the benefits of some of the new Android devices available today. At the end of the webinar, you'll have an opportunity to ask questions. Feel free to submit your questions via the chat window at any time during the webinar. If you have technical issues, you can also let us know via the chat window as well. We've got a lot to cover in the next 30 minutes, so let's get started. Doug? Thank you, Sue. So we wanted to start the conversation with a look at the history of the Android migration. So to do that, let's first go back in time a little bit. Um, the last major mobile platform shift was almost 20 years ago. Before moving to Windows, all mobile devices were running DOS. There were no other options than text-based data collection. Let's look at some of the early DOS devices. So maybe some of you remember the Telzon PTC 960 or the Intermec 2425. These are examples of popular devices in the late 90s and early 2000s. Uh, at that time, terminal emulation dominate, dominated in the warehouse and uh, wireless standards were still very much in flux. Let's look at some of the other popular technology around that time. The Nintendo 64 had just been released. Maybe you remember playing Mario Kart or Super Mario around then. Also, the first ever Palm Pilot had just hit the market. It had 128K of RAM, but could later be upgraded to one meg if you were willing to replace some of the internal hardware. So in the early 2000s, the first devices running Pocket PC 2003 and Windows Mobile 5 appeared on the market. These devices are probably going to look a little bit more familiar to everyone. The MC9090 and CK30 were especially popular, and I know some of you are still using these models. This was a big change. All applications needed to be rewritten. After an initial panic, reactions were pretty positive as users began to take advantage of improved hardware and software. There's a pretty good chance that if you had a phone around then, it was one of these. Uh, of course, the height of mobile applications in these days wasn't Google Maps or Facebook, but we did have the snake game. So, after 10 to 15 years, device hardware has changed, but the Windows Mobile and CE platforms have remained largely constant. So where do we go from here? Even as recently as 2015, there was much uncertainty. Meanwhile, mobility in general had taken off. In 2013, for the first time ever, mobile web traffic eclipsed desktop web traffic worldwide. The mobile market as a whole had exploded. By now, Microsoft had effectively left the marketplace entirely. Windows Phone made up 0.15% of the install base on mobile devices worldwide in 2017. Windows Mobile was below 0.00%. Microsoft did have both Windows Phone and Windows 10 IoT, but both platforms did not have a migration path from the older Windows embedded operating systems. Like all other options, they would require developers to completely rewrite applications. On the consumer side, Microsoft's Windows Phone platform never really took off. It peaked with only 3% of the global market share. In fact, in January of this year, Microsoft officially recommended that users of Windows 10 mobile switch to Android or iOS. On the enterprise side, Windows IoT has been effectively abandoned, with developers not wanting to invest in a platform with a bleak future and no existing adoption. Meanwhile, as everyone knows, iOS and Android have dominated the consumer space. Rugged mobile device manufacturers had a choice. iOS being a closed platform was not an option for a purpose-built rugged data collection device. The market could either continue with Windows embedded in CE or invest in Android devices. So in 2015, there was time. 
Many considered Android immature from an enterprise perspective. In 2019, Android has truly reached maturity and the clock is ticking for Windows CE and Embedded. Extended support has ended for CE6 already and we're only six months away from Windows Embedded 6.5 end of extended support. Next, let's take a look at how the rugged market has embraced this change. As you can see, the market has spoken. The answer is clear and Android has been adopted. All major rugged manufacturers are effectively only releasing new devices on Android. Note that this graph is what is physically out there versus what is being sold. We checked with one of our hardware partners, Zebra, and they expect that 75% of devices sold in 2019 will be Android. In summary, moving to Android is not a question of if, but when. In general though, let's discuss some reasons why the migration makes sense. So what issues are there with running on the old platform? First of all, legacy mobile platforms are reaching end of life. What does this mean? Uh, security updates might be available through vendor support, but the platform limits what is possible. So as new security concerns uh, arise, the software and hardware combination might not be able to support a fix. Syncing PCs uh, with devices has become very difficult with, uh, without Microsoft support past Vista on the synchronization applications. Uh, and modern applications cannot be retrofit to run on this older equipment. Secondly, the cost of supporting and maintaining legacy solutions and applications is increasing. Repairs are definitely expensive and management tools are not as comprehensive on these older solutions. The third major thing is the changing expectations of the incoming workforce. Touch support is limited on the older devices and the newer workers are not familiar with a device that feels like it's 15 years old. Keep in mind that some of these workers have never even played a Nintendo 64 or know what a Palm Pilot is. So what does the new platform bring? We have a lot of new technology at our fingertips now. Uh, leveraging the modern UI experience for data collection only makes sense. There are several ways to do this with Android. Among other things, new devices are more touch-based and have less physical keys, and we can take advantage of gesture-based functionality, and the new devices have larger screens. All of these changes make device use more natural and allow workers to get up to speed much faster. This is a big deal in today's labor market. In the warehouse, the current average onboarding time for a new worker is close to four weeks. And this can be drastically reduced with modern hardware and software. One of the things that we're seeing out in the marketplace today that you've uh, you know, certainly alluded to is, is that uh, there's a, a shortage of qualified applicants for skilled and highly skilled production positions. About 80% of manufacturers today are reporting a moderate or serious shortage. And that's you know, coupled with the very low unemployment rates we're seeing across the US and, and in other international markets today. So it certainly makes sense that uh, the market is looking at warehouse optimization and they're doing that uh, they need to work on speeding up their processes, optimizing their labor, and they're doing that through technology as well. We're going to uh, take a minute now and turn the presentation over to Dan, and he's going to talk about how RightScan is changing to support Android. Dan? Uh, thank you, Sue and Doug. Um, so as far as how RightScan is changing, um, we've developed a new user interface for the Android devices. And the nice thing about it is that we've kept it very similar to the modular organization of, for screens and icons that the users are used to. So in previous versions and on the Windows client, um, you'll have all the same icons. And we've added this menu, you'll see it on the left-hand screenshot there. Um, where the users can simply navigate between the areas uh, very quickly to get to the different um, sections of the product. And there's also a um, horizontal swipe ability too between the modules, so you can quickly swipe through to a different module when needed. Um, the Android UI uh, allows us to capture and display data very dynamically. So it lets the users perform faster and easier and thus improve their performance. Uh, for one example of this is when using lot traceability and a lot traceable stock code, uh, RightScan will display the lot field on 
in that module. Uh, if you're not using lot traceability, the operator will not see that field and will not be required to enter data into it. Um, in addition to that, um, it's easier for operators to access additional data when necessary. So inside the modules, um, if they need to see more data on a stock code or a sales order, for instance, there are links that they can click on to get those details. We've added uh, new process workflows with, uh, within the new UI. We developed uh, better process-centric workflows that help lead the operator through the process. Uh, an example of this is when an order is, or uh, when an operator is picking a sales order, the first thing that RightScan will show, you can see it in that center screenshot, uh, it will show them a list of available sales orders to pick from. Um, and going back to something that Doug mentioned is that it's touch ability, you know, so you can swipe through and pick the order that you want to go pick, or you can scan the order number at the top and it will find that sales order for you. Uh, upon completion of picking that sales order, RightScan will very quickly bring the operator right back to this list of available sales order to pick from. So then they can go find the next order that they need to pick or scan the next order. Uh, as far as deployment goes with Android, the Android operating system gives us the ability to deploy the packages to install these very, very quickly. And we've embraced that in RightScan. So RightScan gives us the ability to very easily download the APK file that you need to install it, and then walks you through the steps to install, and that literally takes seconds. Um, label printing within RightScan. So RightScan has had the ability to work with label printing software in the, the past, and Android is no different. So allowing the combination of RightScan with a piece of software like Nice Label or Bartender, for instance, uh, helps you speed up the label printing process and improve the accuracy of those labels. So RightScan allows you to significantly streamline your label printing process and get the inventory labeled accurately at the time of receiving. This allows you to decrease duplicate data entry, so you don't need to go back and relabel products. You can basically do it right at the point of receiving, and it will automatically send that data to Nice Label or Bartender, and they will print the label for you. This helps reduce errors and saves more time. RightScan uh, also allows you to configure the data to be set to be sent to the label printing software. Um, so, for instance, um, RightScan can send information such as the PO number, the stock number, quantity of that item, uh, lots and serial numbers, and then the label printing software will automatically print those labels based on the information that is provided from RightScan. All right, thank you, Dan. We are going to switch gears now and turn the presentation over to Will, who's going to talk about some of the popular hardware options. Will? Perfect. Thank you, Sue. Absolutely. So building on what Doug and Dan have discussed, it's certainly an exciting time to be sharing these new devices and new platforms. And that's really one of the biggest themes here is that we are now looking at a multi-platform options for um, for your needs. So whereas before we're used to that MC9000 series, pretty much a, a single option um, in terms of a rugged device, we now have multiple different platform options at different price points and that serve different purposes. So on the left-hand side, you can see a light duty uh, device that's just a touchscreen cell phone style device. And on the far right, you can see a more traditional style device that looks familiar. It's the new version of that MC9000 series um, device. So what we're looking at here are representations of these new platforms starting in the low uh, you know, $1,200 all the way up to $1,800 plus for some of the higher duty um, devices. What we're also seeing is emergence of much larger screens. 
So um, screen size has long been something that has been a bit frustrating if we're used to using mobile devices with much, with much larger screens. Now we're seeing a minimum of a four inch screen on many of these devices and some of them being even larger, a five inch screen or plus when we're looking at some of the new tablet options that we have. Another big uh, area of growth has been um, in producing better scanning technology. So when we're looking at a quite simple small scanner, like on the, the light duty tier here, we're actually gonna see 1D and 2D imagers as standard on a lot of these devices. So had you bought a device maybe a few years ago, there was a conversation about, do we need 1D? Do we need 2D capabilities? What's gonna be right for our business? Now 2D is pretty much standard. So you're gonna get the advantage of scanning 1D and 2D barcodes with that new 2D imager that's gonna be standard across the line, regardless of the platform. We're also gonna see longer range scanning capabilities uh, grow up to now 70 feet away. So if you have any of those fourth, fifth pallet tier racks, hanging signs and tall buildings, um, we have a lot better scanning capability in a variety of conditions. Another big growth area has been in battery life as well. We, we did hear some complaints over the years about needing to replace batteries or needing to carry multiple batteries with you throughout your shift. We heard that um, that has been addressed and now we're seeing well beyond a single shift. And in some cases with some of the new devices from Zebra and Honeywell, we're actually seeing shift times up to 24 hours plus. So it's very exciting. So again, in summary, we consider these major changes more of an opportunity to take advantage of more of the functionality that these offer and the additional functionality that's within RightScan. It's an exciting time to be looking at equipment and now we can talk about price points across the board um, in a more specific device to meet your specific need. Thank you very much. Thanks, Will. Um, certainly good thing to remember as we look at the sunset dates of some of the Microsoft operating systems and, and the move to, to Android. So not only can you uh, increase your overall efficiency, uh, but you're going to be keeping up with some of the other functionality that's available in RightScan today. Um, Dan's going to take a second to talk about upgrading. Yeah, so, so upgrading to the latest version of RightScan is very easy. Um, the best thing to do would be to go out to our support portal and just download the latest version, which is 6.51.11.0. Um, you can just log into the portal and download those versions, and those versions will have the new Android version in them. The APK file is included, and you can, be, you can uh, download that APK file onto your device directly from the RightScan web service. Uh, if you have any questions on downloading, accessing, or installing the Android application on a device, please feel free to reach out to us uh, in the support area here. Um, and you can just send an email to support at rightsoft.com and that will go directly to one of our agents here and we will get you on the right track. All right. Thanks, Dan. We are going to switch gears now and turn our time to the Q&A portion of the webinar. Feel free to submit your questions via the chat window. I have a first question here, and this one is for, for MCAT. How does Android security compare to Windows? Sure, so this is Doug. I'll, I'll take a first stab at that. Will, feel free to answer more uh, from your perspective. But the, the main thing is, is related to those sunset dates. Um, Microsoft is basically giving us the day in which they will supply no further security updates to this platform. In reality, because the platform has died out already, they haven't supplied a major update in quite some time for any of the operating system flavors that we discussed today. Um, the manufacturers still are able to supply security updates, but the platform itself is old. So if something comes out like uh, TLS 1.2 is a, is a common security framework in a web uh, application, um, IE on these devices simply can't support that. So there's no patch that um, either Microsoft or a manufacturer can put uh, onto a device that will make that device secure enough to meet that new standard. Um, 
there were initially concerns when we started selling Android devices that Android as a platform was not secure. That, um, that, those days are long past. Um, as a platform, Android is definitely the most secure option out there and uh, the adoption rate you know, across the world has led to um, security patches and, and availability being quite widespread. Um, all manufacturers are able to provide updates on any of the, the main Android versions uh, throughout the life cycle of the device, and we can push those uh, updates to the devices while they're in use. Okay, thank you. Let's see here. This next question is also for MCAT. Can customers still use their older devices after Microsoft Sunset's Windows embedded handheld in CE? I'll take that one too. Um, so um, the answer is yes. Uh, and as I kind of alluded to, it's not a question of, of if, but when. Um, if, if you have a plan where you want to get uh, some life out of your devices, we are definitely happy to support you in that. And we're spending a lot of time doing consults with uh, customers to, to make sure that they can get um, an, enough value out of the devices that they've invested in. Um, that needs to be done thoughtfully. We need to make sure that your, your security concerns are addressed and that the, the hardware will run the software that you need it to. So over time, there's going to be enough reasons to want to upgrade uh, so that you can take advantage of new software and uh, not have to deal with these repairs. But there will not be a day where any particular device stops working. Um, as long as it's working now um, and is supported by Rightsoft, those devices will continue to function. Okay. Thank you. This next question is for Rightsoft. Will the new Android client be available in my current version of WriteScan? So that depends on the version of WriteScan that you're currently running. Uh, WriteScan Android uh, compatibility started in version 6.50.17.0. And anything higher than that, you will have the ability to download and install that APK and then run Android against your version of WriteScan. Okay, this question is also for WriteSoft. What does it cost to upgrade to the latest version of WriteScan? Current versions, uh, or current customers, excuse me, of WriteScan uh, can upgrade for free. Just have to go out to the support portal, like I mentioned earlier, and download the latest version and install it. Okay. Oh, let's see here. This question is also for WriteSoft. Um, Will alluded to 2D barcodes uh, during his discussion of the hardware. Does WriteScan support 2D barcodes today? Uh, yes, it does. Uh, WriteScan um, also provides the smart scan functionality, which works well with 2D barcodes. So you can incorporate multiple pieces of data into one of those 2D barcodes, and then you map it to particular right scan fields and it will parse that data out and put it in and basically fill out the entire form for you. Okay, this next question is for MCAT. Do the new Android devices come preloaded with right scan? I can take that one. Typically we do actually want to fully set up these devices. There's a lot that goes into configuring a device for deployment. Um, beyond just making sure that right scan is loaded. So the easy answer to that is yes, but the longer answer to that is we actually do often work to lock down the devices so the users aren't playing games or accessing the internet openly. Um, we're gonna make sure that, as Doug had alluded to, a lot of the security uh, patches, everything's current on that device. Um, and we actually often leverage a tool called SOTI for mobile device management that allows another additional level of remote support for that equipment. So if you're used to using some of the more legacy Zebra, uh, Motorola, MC9000 series equipment and having to cradle a device to update your right scan version, now for current clients, we're actually pushing that update remotely over the air. So you're not having to cradle that device anymore. So there's a lot that goes into that configuration. We want to make sure all of those things are checked and, uh, and, and, and configured properly along with right scan when that device is delivered to you so it's ready to run out of the box. Okay, thank you, Will. That looks like that is the end of our questions. And um, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us today.
the contact information for both WriteSoft and MCAT is listed on the, on the slide. Please feel free to reach out to us and to MCAT if you have additional questions. As always, we will be sending out a recording of this uh, webinar. Thanks for joining us today.